pan computationalism. What is pan pan computationalism, and why are you opposed to it? <laughs> well, that's another good one. You know, I I coined the term pan computationalism to refer to the analog of panpsychism for computation, the view that every physical system is computational in some sense, and there's different senses. So there's like a very, very strong form of pan computationalism that says something like every physical system performs multiple computations, maybe any computation, because perhaps computation is just something you project onto the system. It's not something intrinsic to the system. It's just an interpretation. But there's, you know, even if you reject that, there is a more limited form of pan computation that says, well, everything performs some computation or another. And I still think that's that's the wrong way to think. Um, but you know, to really get into the details of why and why not is is a is a complicated story. So let me just say that there are robust, strong notions of computation such that at least on the face of it. Most things are not computers. Like if you go to a computer store, yeah, they sell you a certain type of machine. If they try to sell you a cactus or a stone or, or a mouse and say, oh yeah, like these are our newest models of computers, you wouldn't buy that. You wouldn't, that would be a scam. Those are not computers. Those are not computation systems. So what's the difference? Um, well, I mean, you know, to begin with, it's obvious. Like you cannot program or you know, set up these any kind of system you want to give you results on certain specific questions or solve certain problems in a reliable, systematic way. You know, you can you know, give any instance of the problem, and it gives you the solution. Um, whereas with you know, with a digital computer, you can do that. With a cactus or a stone, you can't. So so. I mean, that's the first approximation, but um, it, it, it's just sort of intuitive examples, hopefully illustrating why there's something wrong with just saying point blank, yeah, everything performs computations. No, be more specific, be more careful, which computations and how do you access those computations and you know, how do you get them to, to give you results? that you want. And if you can't, then maybe that's not the same notion of computation. You know, it's a weaker notion of computation. Let's talk about that. Let's be explicit and careful about that. Right, right. Like, exactly. That it seems like what it is, is that you always use computational techniques in natural science. You use computational techniques to model things in physics, because of course you do. It's helpful. But I think what this is, is is kind of a reimagination of science through the lens of everything being computable. And that's And there is strong. and there's one version of this limited pan computation that goes goes all the way down this rabbit hole that not only is everything computational, but like everything ultimately has a computational nature at a at the bottom fundamental level. And and reality itself is fundamentally computational. And that's one of the things that we really try to like address in this book that we're trying to finish now that I mentioned at the very beginning called um, The Physical Signature of Computation. Because there are so many problems with this idea. Uh, and so nobody's really dug deep, you know, to, to um, to try to um, do justice to this, I think. Um, yeah. what, are, what are some of the big problems? Well, the main, the main one, I think, is that no one has really explained what it means that reality is fundamentally computational, meaning that at, at below the fundamental physical level of, say, subatomic particles, I know from elementary fermions and bosons, you know, like the quarks and the electrons and things like that. There's a computational process and it's a purely computational process and nothing else. 
Well, what, is, what does that even mean? You know, when you look at the, the people who say things like that, they say some pretty wacky things. So some of them say, well, it's a simulation run by a simulation by, by a computer in a different universe. Uh, well, like what reason is that to believe that? And also, how is that even a scientific hypothesis? Like that's not a testable idea. That's one kind of, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's one of the things they say. And another thing they say is, well, you know, as long as you can simulate it, then in, in your own computer, then all there, that's all there is to a physical system. You know, like you can simulate it. So it's a computation. That just seems like a big confusion. Um, and then another thing they say is, oh, it's just a mathematical thing. It's a mathematical object. What? Like a mathematical object who also sometimes somehow like evolves in time and space. No, no, because space and time, it's also just a mathematical object. Well, then how do you explain change? You know, in terms of a mathematical object. Oh, it's just an illusion. I mean, that also seems like a big confusion to me. Um, so, yeah, when you try to push these people or like pin them down, there's really strange ideas there that don't make a lot of sense to me. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I, and just more functionally, I don't, I don't know what the use of that model is to try to see everything computationally. Well, I think that it's mostly just a fascination with the hope that we can have an exact model of the universe because usually at least historically the 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 idea uh, was based on digital computation and the idea that you could simulate the world exactly instead of using equations that then you have to numerically approximate the solutions of so if the system itself is all a bottom a digital computational system like a cellular automaton then you can have an exact description of it in your computer but that is sort of a you know epistemic aspiration why in the world would you expect that nature is built so that your you know most flexible type of technology for building models would be able to describe it in an exact and exhaustive way. Um, you know, I did one time I asked uh, Gregory Chaitin, who's a, you know, distinguished mathematician who also says this sort of thing, you know, and if, if that was his motivation and he confirmed, yeah, yeah, it would, wouldn't it be great if we could describe the universe exactly in this way? Well, yeah, but maybe, I mean, I don't know if it would be great, but that's not a reason to believe it. 